Welcome to the Land of House YouTube channel. I'm Seth. This is a ram pump. It's a water pump that needs no fuel or electricity to operate, only flowing, falling water to lift water uphill. So in this video, I want to test out something interesting. If your drive pipe feeding the ram pump is too long, you install a stand pipe, which is just simply a pipe that sticks up and it uh, brings the water source a little closer to the pump. So what happens though, if we were to install a one-way valve just upstream of the standpipe? Basically, this would allow water to come down the hill, fill up the standpipe, but whenever the pressure wave is sent back up towards the source, it would basically hold that valve closed for a short moment and hopefully force the pressure wave to completely go up the standpipe and back down. So let's go ahead and test this out today. I want to run three different tests. The first one I've already got set up. It's a ram pump with no standpipe and I've got uh, about 60 foot of drive pipe going up the hill. So I'm gonna start the pump, measure the output in one minute, and then we will come back down here, install the standpipe and do that same measurement test for one minute. And then lastly, we'll connect that one-way valve upstream of the standpipe and see if we have more output up top when that pressure wave is forced to turn around there and head back down to the pump. Just so you know what the setup looks like, I have a bucket here that is filled from my storage tanks up on the hill. A float valve keeps that level consistent. Half inch drive pipe circles around 60 foot of pipe and goes over here to the pump. Now, this length of drive pipe is ideal and doesn't need a stand pipe, but I just wanna see what happens whenever we install one. So here's the pump itself. If I go ahead and open up the drive pipe, it's gonna start cycling the waste valve, sends a pressure wave into here, builds up pressure in the tank, and then sends water uphill. Now, I already have the uh, delivery pipe full and water is coming out the top up here. So let's make our way up here and do our timed measurement. The lift height, some arbitrary number, not exactly sure what it is. Here's the top of the delivery. So I'm gonna take this little measuring cup, place it right here, and I will see how full this gets in a minute. We might go up here where it's a bit flatter. All right, I'm gonna start the timer and move this over. All right, and when one minute passes, I will let you know how full this thing is. All right, there's our one minute. Let's see what we got here. If I keep that fairly level, 500 milliliters. All right, that's the number we're gonna go with right there. Put this back in the same spot, and we will be back up here in a little while to measure again. Putting the stand pipe right here is going to reduce the drive pipe length by 40 feet. And that may actually reduce the output up top simply because yeah, the um, cycle time is so short. But anyway, we'll give it a try. We'll at least know if the valve placed in the same spot is actually going to uh, improve the test from right here. So anyway, let's go ahead and give it a try. For the new setup, the water comes down 40 feet of supply line, hits this stand pipe, which the water is somewhere right around in this level right here. So that's just open space up top. So theoretically, the pressure wave will go from the pump right up here, hit this, go up here, back down, into the pump. So it's gonna cycle a lot faster. And now you can see in the next test where we put this valve in here, it'll force the water to go up here for a moment and then back and totally ignore all of that. So let's go ahead and start this back up. I anticipate the cycles to be a lot faster than before. Yeah, it's a good bit faster. That should actually reduce the efficiency up top because it's not allowing quite as much time to really hammer this. So, okay, let's go up top. Okay, I'm gonna start the stopwatch here. Move this over. 
And then I'll let you know how this goes one minute from now. All right, there we go. And get this about level again, ever so slightly above 500. So may actually be a little bit more than what it was before. Okay, the last test to see if this is going to work, I'm gonna take this one-way valve and place it right in here so that the water from the pressure wave can't go back further, but we'll still be able to use the head pressure in this pipe here. So let me go ahead and undo all this. So now the idea is water will be able to hit that valve and continue up the standpipe and drive pipe, but the pressure wave won't be able to go back up towards the bucket, and so it will be forced to go into the standpipe. So let's see if it's gonna even work, and then we will go up top and measure it. I think it's definitely about the same speed. So it's working. Let's go check it out up top. I'm gonna hit the stopwatch, move this in, and we'll see what it looks like in a minute. I'm not exactly sure what the results should be like here. All right, there's our one minute, and the results show 500 milliliters. So to be honest, the test was the same in all different directions. So I don't know that it's really necessary to put a non-return valve there in the, uh, the standpipe. It's been my understanding that the ram pump pressure wave is going to seek out the first available open to air water source. And so in this case right here, you notice that there is a slower cycle versus having the full pipe. So the water is traveling down here and it is finding the standpipe, which the water level is right around here. And it's turning back around and heading down to the pump. Now that is making the cycles a little bit faster than if it were traveling all the way around to the bucket and then back. But it seems like it's putting out about the same amount of water up top. So this just concludes that you don't have to have any kind of valve there at the standpipe to stop the water. Now there is a ratio you could use where you have a bigger uh, supply pipe, an even bigger standpipe, and then the smallest pipe of the three is the drive pipe. But I have found that if you just have um, the same size that your ram pump needs. So for instance, mine is a half inch. Then I have a half inch drive pipe supply line and a stand pipe. So it seems to work out just fine. If you found this video interesting and helpful, leave me a thumbs up, make sure you're subscribed, and be sure to leave a comment down below. If you want to lift water out of a creek, then I have four different sizes of ram pump available at landahouse.com. Amazon and eBay, links in the description down below. Basically, I'm taking about four foot of drop right here, comes around, cycles into the pump, and goes way up the hill close to my house. So you can see that ram pump is lifting pretty good. I'm Seth with Land House, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.